What things should you consider when calculating a budget for you and your household in retirement? Hi, I'm Garrett Ray, financial planner here at the Wealth Guardians and the Ray Financial Group. And I'm Bryce Payne, and you've entered the vault, the Wealth Guardians video series on all things pertaining to retirement planning. In this episode, we're going to talk about budgeting, forecasting a budget in retirement. We're going to talk about uh, monthly routine expenses, debt, future expenses, uh, planning for inflation, and considering what happens when a spouse passes away and how that changes debt. You always see these like and subscribe buttons down below the screen there. There's for a reason for that. Go ahead and click on those if you want to catch future episodes of The uh, Vault with Doug Garrett and myself. Okay, Garrett, let's go ahead and get started on this episode. Uh, creating a budget for ourselves. In yeah, Bryce. So, you know, we have to start somewhere. And the easiest place where you can start if you're trying to go through the task of creating a budget is let's identify some of those things that are just our monthly routine expenses. We know we're going to have to pay them. Tell us a little bit about what people should be considering. Yeah, so these are all the things that you would want to consider if you're, you don't have a financial planner and you're doing this on your own. How do I create a budget for myself in retirement? The first thing we want to consider is the easiest one, monthly routine expenses. And we can generally divide that into two categories, your obligations or the things that you have to spend money on and then our discretionary spending so the okay, things we sure. have to spend money on that's your basics that's not just bills that's like i mean we all consider our bills like our utilities utilities yeah uh, electric uh all of that okay so that's that's our that's our bills but there's also other obligations or things that you have to spend money on gas in the car sure yeah, those kind of things so groceries yeah. groceries Gotta eat. Yeah. let's put those out there first so let's calculate what we're spending on our obligations and the things that we have to spend money on then we've got a second category discretionary okay. spending so most people don't want to just spend money on the things that they have to spend money on they want to live a little bit in retirement sure. they want to enjoy retirement so those are going to fall under the the category of the, the things that will fall under that category, I should say, are going out to eat. That's sure. a real basic one. Yep. Um, taking vacations, okay. buying Christmas gifts for the kids or the family, yep. uh, new clothes, those uh, kind of things yep. you don't have to spend money on, but you generally do because you want to. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to the items of things that you have to spend money on, it's easy to calculate the ones that we spend money on on a monthly basis. Yeah, you every always, single month. You always get that utility bill. You always sure. get that cell phone bill, that internet bill, the cable bill. Those are easy not to overlook. Right. But what about the things that don't come in on a monthly basis that are still kind of an obligation? Mm, yeah. Car registration. Yep, yeah, got to do that. Car insurance. Um homeowners insurance yep. Uh, yep. even even if your mortgage is paid off you might still have you probably still have the property um taxes sure you got to pay yep. so these are things that are easy to overlook because you don't you don't have that in your month-to-month -month budget but you still got to spend money on it in retirement so let's not overlook those add those up and maybe divide by 12. So sure. we've got a monthly version of that. So if I'm only spending, say, $1,000 every six months on my car insurance, and I'm doing that twice a year, that's $2,000, let's divide that by 12 yep. and add that into our monthly budget. Makes sense. All right, so that's that's your basic spending. And again, not wanting to overlook the discretionary spending. Okay, so that's the stuff that are, are you know, our regular monthly occurrences. And then we talked about some irregular payments that we're gonna break out into a monthly payment. Right. Well. That's just things that, for the most part, that we need to kind of live our life. But what about if we have uh, some sort of debt out there, whether it's a car loan or maybe we're still paying for our own student loans or child student loans? How do we yeah. calculate those? Yeah. So, again, sometimes it might be something that is often overlooked, um, but maybe you've got, as you said, a student loan, credit card debt, sure. the mortgage. Here's why you want to separate those from everything else. Don't include your mortgage. Um, debt in one of your monthly expenses and here's the re there's two reasons why really it comes okay. down to, to wanting to separate those a debt is presumably 
going to be paid off at some point. Yeah. So the budget at that some you, point it will end. <laughs> right. Exactly, hopefully. Right. Yeah. So the, the items that we were just going over, presumably that's going to last us forever. You're always going to have an electric bill. You're yep. always going to have an internet bill. All right. Always, always going to be gonna buying be, groceries. Always yep. going to be buying groceries. Sure. But debt we want to put aside and kind of calculate that a little bit differently because whether it's a mortgage, a student loan, a credit card debt, a car payment. Presumably, that's going to get paid off sure. at some point. So, if you if you bought a, a, a car and you, you financed a car for five years and you did that two years ago, and you're calculating a budget now and you think, well, this is what I'm going to spend money on in retirement. Well, wait right. a minute, that car gets paid off now in three more in years. In three more years, if yeah. That's a five hundred dollar a month payment. Doesn't that mean our expenses drop by five hundred dollars? Sure. In a yeah. couple of years. So that's one reason that we want to separate it. Okay. Here's the other reason, and we're going to talk about this in a, in a second. So I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse here, but inflation. Ah. Right, so we're going to talk about inflation in a minute, but does inflation impact your car loan payment or your credit card payment? It shouldn't, no. Right. Just because inflation is at 8, 9, 10% right now doesn't mean that your car loan payment is going up month by month. Right. So if we got that for six years, we want to separate that and attach 0% inflation to anything that inflation is not technically touched. Uh, okay. So that's I the see. two reasons that you want to separate debt from all your other routine expenses. Okay, right. Bryce. So we've talked about our regular monthly expenses. We've talked about different debts we may have, whether right. that's a car loan, student loan, mortgage, you name it. Well, what if I, as I'm kind of planning my budget for retirement, what if there's things that I want to spend in the future, but I'm not spending now? Right. So how do we tackle that? Yeah. So uh, this is another one that is often overlooked. Somebody thinks, Bryce, I've done a pretty good job at uh, figuring my budget. You as a financial planner, tell me where I made a mistake. This could kind of be one of them. Uh -huh. Um, not planning for future expenses that we don't have today. What could that possibly be? Um, an easy one would be car loans. All right. yeah. if, if you're going into retirement now and your car's got 100,000 miles on it, is that the car that you're going to count on getting you right. through retirement? Probably having a, a new one coming up. You're going to put, right. yeah. put another 300,000 miles on that car. You're probably going to have another car payment at some point. Now, a lot of people might be uh, lucky then, be in a position where they don't have to finance the car in retirement. Right. They'll just pay for it in cash outright. Great. That's a whole different conversation. But if you are going to finance it and we're going to spend another $500 in today's dollars on a car payment, how often will we be doing that in retirement? Right. Might be that right. just one more car pay, one more uh, new car might not last you all the way through retirement. That's a, yeah, maybe we have to do it two or three times. Two or three times, yeah. exactly. If there's two yeah. people driving cars, you might have two, if not four, of those <laughs> at some point. You <laughs> yeah, know? absolutely. Um, I, I I bought a car a couple of years ago. I'm not anticipating that that's the car I'm going to go into retirement with, let alone no, through retirement. Probably with, not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we want to we want to consider those kinds of things um, that we might have additional. Um, loan payments on. Another one might be um, we're going to buy a second house at a some second point. Home, sure. and, uh, we might finance that. You know, everyone in going into retirement, or not everyone, but a lot of people going into retirement have their eyes set on that mountain house up in sure. the mountains, sure. or the, the, yeah. the beach house or the lake house. Okay, uh, let's make, let's figure out how yeah, let's we plan for it. Are we going to finance yeah. that or not? Yeah. If so, let's figure out how long that, how much the payment is going to be and how long will that payment be on our books yep. for. One, um, one thing that's pretty common too that we hear a lot, Bryce, is people always say, when I retire, I know I want to travel more. Okay, yes. how much are we traveling? Right. And if we can get a number around that, let's break that off into a monthly expenditure. Exactly. So you might not be traveling a lot right now. So if you're just, right. if you're trying to base your retirement budget off of what you have now, there's cracks in there that we're going to overlook. And one of those things uh, that we want to make sure is that we're covering is, as you said, the most common one, I'm going to travel. I'm going to travel. I'm more. going to travel in retirement. Yep. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of money on the grandkids. Okay, uh, I don't have grandkids yep. now, but I'm going to have grandkids presumably in a couple of years from now. Sure. I'm going to spend money on those. All right, that's fine. Great power to you. But let's go ahead and calculate that. Okay. Are okay. you going to be spending just as much money on the grandkids when they're 20 years old as you did when they were two years old? <laughs> Perhaps not. Perhaps hopefully not. not right? yeah. Yeah. Um, are we going to be traveling just as much when we're 85? 20 years into retirement as we did at 65. Probably not. Probably not, if you're like yeah. most people. So let's figure out how much we're going to be spending on traveling, how much we're going to spend, be spending on the grandkids, and for how long. Okay. All right. Very so that's, good. That's future expenses that we don't have now, an easy one for people to overlook. Okay. So we covered... Uh, Everyday expenses, we covered debt, yep. we covered possible future expenses. Bryce, you kept mentioning throughout this whole conversation 
that little factor of inflation. Inflation, right. So we tell us a little bit about inflation. What's something that you know you use in your calculations when helping people out? Just give people a taste. Yeah. Um, so inflation is another one that somebody often uh, forgets to calculate for. Sure. They say, hey, I'm going to spend $5,000 a month in retirement. My Social Security is 3000 That means I only have to dip into my investments $2,000 a month plus taxes. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what I've calculated for $5,000 a month spending for the rest of my life. Mm. Okay. Did you calculate? Did you figure for inflation in that? Deer, cotton headlights kind of look. Yeah, um, sure. No. Well, what do you know what the average rate of inflation is or what the 100 year average of inflation is? No. OK, so let's go ahead and add that yeah, in there yeah. because that is going to drastically change. If you thought your picture was really, really rosy in retirement, <laughs> it's because you didn't calculate for maybe inflation. not quite as rosy. No, <laughs> maybe yeah. not. Hopefully so, it's still good. Yeah. But so, uh, that's yeah. definitely going to add a little uh, the sting of reality. To but us. that's that's important to note. If, if mentally, a, uh, you know, a person or a couple is going into retirement thinking that they need to spend five thousand dollars per month in today's dollars. Yeah. What does that look like 10 years from now? It's a lot. In our it's mind, we can go back 10 years, it, you know, in our memory and remember what we used to pay for a gallon of gasoline or a gallon of milk, and it's a lot different today. I'll tell you, that often, will continue in retirement. I'll tell you often here <laughs> that we've got somebody who is uh, seven years out from retirement, and, and they say, "Well, we want to spend five thousand dollars a month." Okay, great. And then we we look at our projections, and they look under the spending tab here, and they say, "What's that? Uh, what's that seven thousand five hundred dollars in spending there? I told you it was five thousand uh, dollars." Like, well, right, but that's adjusted for inflation for yeah, seven years, ten from or now. fifteen years in the future. Holy cow! Yeah. Is oftentimes the response. Yeah. Yep, so absolutely. we've got to calculate for inflation in there. It, it, you know, we're happy for our clients to plug in whatever number they want us to, but let's sure. face it in reality. The 100-year average rate of inflation is 3.27%. That's a good starting point. Now, sure. if you're not optimistic about that and you think it's going to go up a bit, okay, so maybe you want to figure 3.4, 3.5%. Sure. Don't get crazy with that. I have had, we've had people, Garrett, who say, I, I don't like where the government or where the world is heading. Let's calculate for 10% inflation. That's uh, unrealistic. Yeah. yeah that's, that's not unsustainable at that point. Yeah. Um, yes, inflation is higher right now, but that is correcting a 15 year period of really low inflation right. that we had. So we're fixing that average there is what we're doing right now. Uh, I'm not going to get into politics, whether whose fault it is, but that's just something that happens. If sure. you have 2% inflation for a 15 year period, at some point it's not going to go back up to the 3.27. At right. some point it's going to go up to 7, 8, 9% for a little bit to try to adjust that back, back to the, yep. the, the 20 year average back to the 100 year average. Okay. But you've got to calculate that. now. Sure. Going back to what we talked about earlier with debt, most debt, you do not have to apply an inflation rate to that. So if you're saying, well, what are my groceries going to be? If my groceries are $400 a month now, what is that going to be five years from now? Okay, so you do the 3.27, sure. 3.27, do that five times. You don't have to do that to your mortgage or most typical debt. So let's leave that out of that equation, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, because a lot of mortgages are like a 30-year fixed rate or a 15-year fixed rate, right. that sort of thing. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so we talked about inflation. Um, Bryce, you know, th this is a little bit of a dif difficult subject to talk about, but how does one's budget change if they uh, lose a spouse? Yeah. How, how, would, how would we adjust the calculation there if there's a loss in the family? Yeah, so a lot of people will think just on the surface of things, well, if my spouse passes away, um, that means my budget gets cut in half. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be the case. Uh, the heating in the house is still more or less going to be the same. More the, same yeah. the cable bill is still going to be the same. Sure. Uh, Internet's still going to be the same. Yes, groceries might go down by sure. around half. Um, Maybe Other, gas. Gas gasoline, in the car, yeah. maybe go down. If you both had cars, then yeah, sure. that's yeah. probably going to go yeah. down by half. If you had two cars and now you only got one, okay, so that's your car insurance and your car um, registration is going to go down by half. Sure. But uh, a lot of expenses don't. So let's be safe and say that our total expenses drop by 25%, okay. not by 50%. Let's just, let's just figure 25%. Always better to err on the side of caution. Maybe it actually drops by 30%, but better to calculate for 25. Okay. Very All right. Good. Um, and another thing that's going to change when a spouse passes away is the tax filing status. You're going to move from a joint tax filing status to a single, and the tax brackets are completely different there. In fact, they often, more often than not, work in favor of a married couple. Mm, than they sure, do of individual. course. Yeah. So yeah. you might actually be paying higher taxes in retirement when a spouse passes away than what you were used to. So that's something else we've got to figure. 
Yeah, all good points, Bryce. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's uh, that. Uh, that's what I wanted to cover as far as showing somebody what does a professional consider when creating a budget for themselves in retirement, or how does a professional help uh, somebody calculate how much retirement is going to cost them? Which no, I think it's great. I think you gave the viewers a lot to think about and maybe some things that they hadn't considered that they're now saying, oh, yeah, I definitely need to, make, to include that in my budget. So, yeah. Very good. And if, if it still seems like an overwhelming task for you, again, that's what a financial planner is out there for. Uh, a financial planner is not just an investment advisor. A holistic financial planner helps you with calculating budget, helping you figure out what your Social Security filing strategy might be, what your pension filing options might be, creating a budget and helping make sure that budget is accurate, not just up to retirement and not just through the first couple of years of retirement, but through retirement. So if this seems like an overwhelming task for you, you <laughs> probably want to sit down with a financial planner. And again, Garrett, what's one of the first questions I would we would encourage somebody to ask when they're thinking of what financial planner should I go to? Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Just are, you, sure, no. are you a fiduciary? Are you a fiduciary? Yeah. yeah. So I'd sit down with a fiduciary and they'll help you figure this out and make sure you're not uh, overlooking something that could make a huge difference in what your budget looks like in retirement. Absolutely. All right. Anything else to add, Garrett? No, I think you covered it. All right. Well, that's going to cover it for this episode of The Vault. Again, those like and subscribe buttons down there below the screen are there for a reason. Click on one of those if you want to catch future episodes of The Vault with Doug Garrett and myself. I'm Bryce Payne. And I'm Garrett Ray. And this has been The Vault.